हेलो एवरीवन कैन यू हियर मी ओके ओके सो ओके सो देर इज अ नाउ वी विल डिस्कस द फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ द मेन्स्ट्रुएशन सो दिस फिगर यू शुड हैव इन योर माइंड बिकॉज इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस फिगर देन एंड देन यू कैन प्रिस्क्राइब एनी मेडिकेशंस फॉर इनफर्टिलिटी सो दिस इज द प्रॉपर फिगर सो देर इज अ हॉर्मोनल प्ले इफ टेक्स प्लेस वन सेकेंड हाँ प्लीज बेटा चार्जर नहीं चालतु आपने बेटा चालू है लेक्चर बैटरी जती रही चार्जर नहीं चालतु अरे अरे आमज लोचो शायद नहीं चालत नहीं चालतु तो ज कहू ने बेटा चालू लेक्चर थोड़ी उभी थो हेलो नाउ वी लुक फॉर द फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ द मेन्स्ट्रुएशन सो दिस इज द वेरी इम्पोर्टंट फिगर यू हैव कीप इन माइंड वॉट चेंजेस अकर्स इन द हॉर्मोन्स ड्यूरिंग द डिफरंट फेज ऑफ द मेन्स्ट्रुअल साइकल सो फर्स्ट वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस ऑल दिस हॉर्मोन्स वॉट इज एफ एस एच एल एच इस्ट्रोजन प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन एवरीथिंग वी हेड डिस्कस एफ एस एच एल एच आर द गोनेडोट्रॉफिन्स हॉर्मोन्स सिक्रिटेड फ्रॉम द एंटीरियर पिच्यूटरी इस्ट्रोजन एंड प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन आर स्टीरोडल हॉर्मोन्स सिक्रिटेड बाय द ओवरीज नाउ वॉट हैपन्स वेन देर इज अ स्टार्टिंग ऑफ द मेन्स्ट्रुअल फेज At the start of menstrual phase, all hormones are in a basal stage, means very at a normal levels. So that's why the importance to carry out day two H, FSH, LH, TSH, and the prolactin. FSH and LH are the main hormones, but TSH and prolactin are associated hormone. So if there is a disturbance in TSH and the prolactin. thyroid and prolactin hormone it affect the function of fsh and lh so that's why day to h basal hormone of these four hormones are required now what happens at the start of the menstruation fsh and lh are in a basal stage means it is between 1.2 to 8 micro international unit per ml now fsh lh basal estrogen is basal basal means at a lower age it is less than 50 picogram per ml now the signal sent from the hypothalamus there is a release of gonadotropin releasing hormone that we discussed gonadotropin releasing hormone give the signals so that's why there is a start the secretion of fsh and lh but main secretion will start of fsh lh will remain at a lower stage still estrogen and fsh will work together for activation there is a gradual rise of the estrogen is required fsh will give only the push ke ha activate kar diya to there is a little rise in the fsh and main increase in the estrogen 
एक बार एफ ने इस्ट्रोजन को एक्टिवेट कर दिया बोल दिया कि हाँ अभी तुम आगे फॉलिकल को ले जाओ फिर एफ एस एच विल कम इन द लोअर रेंज सो नाउ द अंडर इंफ्लुएंस ऑफ द इस्ट्रोजन दैट इज सिक्रेटेड बाय द ओवरी देर इज अ डेवलपमेंट ऑफ फॉलिकल स्टार्ट सो दो इन ओवरीज दोज हैविंग एफ एस एच एंड एल एच रिसेप्टर मोर ससेप्टेबिलिटी फॉलिकल्स विल स्टार्ट एज ए डॉमिनेंट फॉलिकल्स एंड अदर विल बिकम एट्रेटिक और इनएक्टिव सो नाउ द अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ इस्ट्रोजन एफ एस एच एल एच सेंसिटिविटी रिसेप्टर ओवम बिकम डॉमिनेंट फॉलिकल मीन्स दे स्टार्ट इंक्रीजिंग इन द साइज initial size of enteral follicles are 2 to 8 mm gradually with estrogen these follicles are increasing simultaneously due to estrogen endometrial lining of uterus also grow so when you see on a day 6 or a day 7 under the influence of estrogen the follicle size will reach up to 12 to 13 mm now when they reach 12 to 13 mm now only estrogen will not going to work they need support now here the come function of lh to push up the follicle to increase in the size after 12 to 13 mm the function estrogen is gradually rising but only estrogen will not going to work so the lh will come in action and lh is raised so pehle se fsh ne jo lh wale receptor wale ek se unhi ko select karke dominant kiya hua hai now the when lh comes in the market due to estrogen and lh that follicles grow grow up to maturation matured follicles are reaches up to 18 to 20 mm in size 2 cm yeah 18 to 20 mm this is the maturation stage of the follicle so when they reaches to 18 to 20 mm there is a slight rise in the fsh and the main importance is lh surge what is lh surge jo bolte hai na ki dheere 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 badhta hai par ek level aa jata hai wo burst like a bomb phutta hai so now lh will not going to increase more there is a burst sudden drop in the lh level called lh surge so when this lh surge happens after 24 to 36 hours later ovulation the ova will released burst from the follicles dominant follicles and that ova will immediately pick up by the fimbri of the fallopian tube now jaise hi lh surge hua there is a sudden drop in lh and fsh level but and also the estrogen all level will come down but now the when egg reaches in the fallopian tube that is called mid luteal phase dheere dheere and on day 18 or day 19 after day 5 call yesterday we had taught ke after fifth day of fertilization the embryo will implant in the uterus so in the mid luteal phase means approximate on day 20 or day 21 there will be the rising again secretion of progesterone main is progesterone and the estrogen from the ovaries for luteal phase maintenance so if there is a fertilization happens and they implant in the uterus to provide food for that embryo 
estrogen and progesterone secreted by the ovary so that's why in the luteal phase estrogen and progesterone is must now if the pregnancy happens progesterone will continue to rise if there is a we discussed luteal phase defect due to any hormonal problem progesterone not secreted properly that is called luteal phase defect or if fertilization not happened so no development of the embryo so in late luteal phase means just before the menses again there is a drop in the level of estrogen and progesterone and withdrawal came that is called menstrual cycle or menstruation so what happens again from day 2 all hormone comes in the basal levels and then again new cycle will be start so this is how the fluctuations in the hormones happening so if you find any anovulatory cycle that means there is a problem in the proper at a proper time of secretion of this hormones so this is a normal basic physiology of the menstrual cycle here the i had taken this from the standard book so you can read it there that already i had explained you in a very well so i am going to uh, read so you had a proper idea at the onset of the menstrual cycle all steroidal hormones are low so with corpus luteum regression means corpus luteum abhi usse pata chal gaya ke pregnancy happen nahi hone wali hai that is called corpus luteal regression fsh will start the cohort from the follicles grow follicles under the influence of estrogen along with endometrial proliferation rising level of estrogen leads to decline in fsh following fsh decline lh will come in the action and mid follicular phase lh will rise and further growth of dominant follicles dominant follicles now under the control of lh and when there is a maturation it leads to the lh surge so after 24 to 36 hours there is a lh surge happens leads to transformation of endometrium from follicular to secretory phase once the ovulation happens estrogen start decline but in the mid luteal phase to support the implanted embryo or whatever usko nahi pata hai ki embryo hua ki nahi there will be the rise of estrogen and progesterone from corpus luteum and carry change secretory changes in endometrium the combined effect of estrogen progesterone during the life span of corpus luteum act centrally until that no gonadotrophin release will be there but if the pregnancy not happening there is a damage means end of the corpus luteum so there is a corpus luteum regression sudden fall in all the hormones and there is a whipping of endometrium called menstrual bleeding and from day to day 3 again new cycle will start clear so this is all about menstruation of physiology it's a very complicated but i had tried uh, very simply to uh, explain you so uh, this is the end of our lecture tomorrow uh, the basic lecture will start of infertility so those who are interested for this course can register and from tomorrow i will send you all the ppt material all the recorded audio video lecture at the end of the session for your future okay 
so anyone have the question can ask and then i am stopping this uh, lecture series so tomorrow we will start from infertility patient history part and everything ha bolie हम्म हाँ वो वो दैट इज कॉल्ड पैथोलॉजी सो फर्स्ट नाउ फ्रॉम टू मोरो दिस इज द फिजियोलॉजी वी हैड लर्न नाउ टू मोरो वी विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम बेसिक हिस्ट्री टेकिंग सो हिस्ट्री टेकिंग एग्जामिनेशन एंड फ्रॉम हिस्ट्री एंड एग्जामिनेशन विच इन्वेस्टिगेशन विल यू गोइंग टू एडवाइस और वो इन्वेस्टिगेशन आप कब कराओगे कब आप हार्मोन कराओगे कब आप एच कराओगे कब आप ट्यूबल टेस्टिंग कराओगे कब आप प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन कराओगे सो दैट वी विल डिस्कस फ्रॉम द हिस्ट्री पार्ट बिकॉज इतने सारे इन्वेस्टिगेशन है तो यू कैंट प्रिस्क्राइब एच इन्वेस्टिगेशन टू एवरी पेशेंट सो आपको कौन सा कब कराना है सो दैट वी विल गोइंग टू लर्न from the history part so that's why history taking is very very important for infertility so once you are thorough knowledge in the infertility history simple without doing examination you can prescribe the investigation and by prescribing investigations then you can take a decision where is the pathology so when to describe it is ovulatory dysfunction it is a problem at a tubal factor problem at a uterine factor in male infertility problem is there then what to do then everything will come by gradually so with this two days we learned only the physiology then actual a uh, clinical practice scenario will start from tomorrow but this is the base if you have proper base regarding this then and then we can learn, you can learn the pathology okay so tomorrow we will start with what to infertility history part and the investigation ha please pardon yeah if you for that uh, this two days are free demo class uh two morrows there will be the uh, paid uh, this is a paid course so you have to register for yourself and uh, if you once the registered 2000 rupees uh, indian rupees fees are there if you once the registered i will enter in my whatsapp group so in whatsapp group at the end of the lecture we will upload uh, daily recorded audio video lecture and the ppt presentation anyone ha ha please pardon 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 i didn't get you means are you asking for medication i ha huh, that that is a very old method so for that you have to uh, learn regarding all the ovulatory method so that we will going to discuss when there is ovulation part will come so in that we will discuss all the ovulatory methods and from this ovulatory methods we will is going to discuss which are the uh, safe days which are the unsafe days that we will all going to discuss in ovulatory part okay okay fine okay bye bye all those who are interested can join tomorrow 3:30 pm tomorrow join link will be different okay bye bye